Father Bernard Nordkamp, uh, a Catholic priest from Germany who was here in Namibia during the apartheid and fought vehemently against the apartheid and spoke out against it and said how wrong it was. And he was loved and he had a special place in his heart for the youth. So he actually made this into kind of a youth center. There's a sign outside this room that says Catholic Youth Center. Christianity's role in Namibia began as a result of European missionary expeditions in the 18th and 19th century. Missionaries from the Rhenish Missionary Society, as well as the Anglican and Finnish Missionary Societies, set out to convert native Namibians. The legacy of these efforts is still strongly felt today, with 90% of Namibians being Christian and a majority of these being Lutheran. Despite the end of apartheid, Churches remain one of the most racially divided institutions in the country. Bernard Nordkamp was a Roman Catholic German missionary who arrived in Namibia in 1986. His work in Namibia is directly related to Namibia's religious and political history. In 1920, South Africa administered rule over what was then Southwest Africa. Apartheid was implemented in Namibia in the early 1950s, dividing the country by race. Religious leaders were torn between protesting the regime and maintaining the status quo. The Council of Churches in Namibia, CCM, was formed in 1978 as a coordinated effort to challenge the injustices of apartheid. After the fall of apartheid, Bernard Nordkamp started the BNC in an effort to assist disadvantaged youth in the Kachatura area of Windhoek. The issues faced by children in many parts of Kachatura are the result of racist policies which segregated black Namibians. With assistance from Catholic aid charities, the center began as a basic community program feeding meals to neighborhood children. In 2005, Mary Beth Gallagher became the director of the BNC and turned the program into an after-school recreational center for students to play. By 2010, she realized that the BNC was not living up to its potential for helping children, and using her background in elementary education, completely restructured the program into an educational facility, focusing specifically on English and mathematics. Dog said my 12 years here, I see that the children coming into our program, their academic level is just dropping and dropping. So we're getting more and more kids that can't read, and more and more kids that if you say 7 plus what equals 10, they can't tell you that. They have electricity yet? Uh-uh, I don't think so. No. Oh my uh -uh. gosh. Yeah, no electricity. That's they amazing. They didn't have bathrooms for the longest time. Yeah, I don't wow. even know how they manage that, but I don't even want to go there. But, uh...
Fidel Castro Rural School, despite many setbacks, has quickly become one of the best performing public schools in Namibia. While class sizes are still very high, with an average of around 40 children per teacher, Fidel Castro continues to outperform other area schools. Focus is placed on foundational language learning, which ensures cumulative growth. According to Fidel Castro School's Director of Education, teachers also learn from each other's teaching styles and lesson plans. with other schools is, as you know, Philip is she's, I think, yes, seven years now. The school is still developing. It doesn't have a hall. It doesn't have a library. We don't have computer classes. My favorite thing about Philip is is um, my principal. She, uh, but uh, she, okay, she advises us not to do the bad things, but to do the good things. What the principal does here, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, with, like we have a problem of absenteeism in most of the schools in Katutura but she really tries to bring them to order. Mm. So you find like maybe first time it's a problem to the new ladies that they are on track now. Mm. Mm. And um, yeah. So she makes sure that they she come? She makes sure that they adhere to the school's mm. rules and regulations. Sources say basic services such as water and electricity are not always reliable in this area of Katatura, and availability can fluctuate daily especially in Namibia's current drought. These services tie to other environmental factors, such as power sources. The Van Eck power station in the northern industrial area of Windhoek relies entirely on coal and supplies the greater metropolitan area. At maximum capacity, the station can use up to 78 tons of coal per hour. Given Namibia's current drought, BNC staff try to conserve water in any way possible. For example, when student members brush their teeth, the gray water is then utilized for flushing toilets, mopping floors, and other uses. Let me see, Francie, let me see you brush those choppers. Yeah. There you go, keep brushing. Yes. You got this. Yes, Paul. Good job, buddy. Uh, so 100% of the money for running this place all comes from outside of Namibia. Uh, the cash, okay? Uh, that comes from uh, donors in the USA, Canada, Germany, Norway, Sweden, um, the UK, uh, so mostly European, North American. that our focus and our emphasis really needs to be on morals and values and mm -hmm. ethics. So I don't preach any religion. We don't say any prayers, historic prayers from any particular religion. Um, but we do tell the kids, um, you know, that they must be kind to each other and they must respect and have dignity and no one's allowed to, to put other, anybody else down or bully or do those things. Not because Jesus died on the cross or not because you know you're a Catholic or you're a Christian or you're a, a Buddhist or a Muslim but simply because the universal law of ethics and morality tells you you know to do unto others as you would like done unto you and proud to be a as the BNC I will show respect 
and make good decisions. My teacher believes in me, and I believe in me. I believe in me. kids that not only does BNC stand for Bernard Nordkamp Center, but it stands for Best Namibian Children. What is, what's one plus one? Two. I love you too. Aww.